compounds and molecules. So here it is. Carbon has what we said, we said six electrons, right? Two in the first energy shell, and how many in the second one? Four. So this is carbon, of course the atomic nucleus is here. It's got six protons, six neutrons, that's carbon. But the way it is right now, carbon is disobeying the octet rule. Okay, let's draw hydrogen. Hydrogen is right here. Hydrogen has only one, it's only the first energy shell because it only has one electron. And the way it is right now, hydrogen is also disobeying the octet rule. But listen to me, the word octet is like A, but that's not, that does not apply to this. To fulfill the outer shell, hydrogen needs only one more. Because what's the maximum occupancy of the first energy shell? Two. Only two. So hydrogen has one, and it needs one more to satisfy the rule. Carbon has four, and it needs four more to satisfy the what rule? The octet rule. So it says this, hey hydrogen, yeah? Are you okay with the octet rule? No. How about you? No. So why don't we do this? You share your electron, I'll share mine. And when they do, they create a bond. So this hydrogen says, well, that's mine, and I think this is mine now. So this hydrogen is happy. Fulfilled the octet rule. Carbon says, oh, I, I, good. If it worked once, I think it's gonna work three more times. Well, let's try. Let's go make a deal with another hydrogen. Hey, you share your electron, I'll share mine. You wanna do that? Yeah, let's do it. Bond. Let's do it again. You share your electron, I'll share mine. Let's do it. Bond. And then do it again. Another bond. So you created a new molecule. This molecule is CH4, which is? Methane. Methane. And then you can keep doing that to create life. Molecules come together to make macro, uh, macromolecules, organelles, cells, life. Look at that. Look how fragile life is. Without the octet rule, all we'd have is elements. That's it. But no life. No compounds. No molecules. No life. Because they go looking for electrons, they start creating new things. It's amazing how that works. Okay, so you have CH4, you can make everything, you can make oxygen, O2, H2, you can make so many different things when they go do that kind of, when they go looking for electrons. Now watch this please. Neon, look at neon. It's got two electrons in the first energy shell and eight electrons in the second energy shell. Can neon, does neon need to react with anything? No. no. Because it says, I'm already satisfied. I got the octet rule covered. I don't need to look for electrons. My octet rule is already satisfied. So neon is non-reactive. Helium is non-reactive. Argon is non-reactive. Because their octet rule is already satisfied. So what it looks like is elements from this, this way, all of these are reactive. These guys tend to be non-reactive because their octet rule is already satisfied. Okay. The next topic, and then we'll, we'll quickly break into groups here. Again, you please, please listen. It is a tough topic for some students. The shapes of the orbits. Some students have trouble with it. So I, I will try my best to help you out here. We said, watch the show please. This is the nucleus. What's inside the nucleus? Protons. Protons and? Neutrons. We got it. What's happening with the electrons? They're, They're outside, right? Mm -hmm. And they're always in motion? Yes. Yeah, good. Let's look at the first electron. The first electron lives in the first energy shell. Eventually, you'll have another shell and another shell. They're at different levels. It's like a building again. First floor, second floor, third floor. Okay, let's deal with the first energy shell. The first electron, watch this, is gonna go like this. Now if you follow it, 
You see? It creates a sphere. It's three-dimensional. The path of the electron creates a spherical orbit. It will look like this. So the nucleus and a sphere around it. Okay, if the first electron is going this way, when you throw in a second electron, it's gonna go the other way. Because they don't like each other, remember that? Light charges repel. So if you're going this way, <laughs> I'm going the other way. So the first electron is gonna go like this, that's hydrogen. Helium is gonna do this. One electron is gonna go this way, the other electron is gonna go that way, but it's still spherical. It's in the same sphere. So it's called the 1s orbital. It's one because it's the first energy shell. S because of its shape. It's spherical. Okay, so we covered the first two electrons. Hydrogen, helium. Okay, lithium has three electrons. The first two go like this. The third one lives on the second floor. But it too goes like this. It's just a bigger sphere. So look at, if you can see the picture here, here is 1s. 2s is just a bigger sphere. So the third and the fourth electron live here. The first and the second electron live here. That'll take you up to helium. Third and fourth, uh, lithium beryllium. I think I'm right, yeah, beryllium, yeah. Okay, what about the fifth electron? This is where the fun begins. The fifth electron will take on this path. Watch this, like that. It's still in the second energy shell, but it doesn't do this. It does like a figure eight. Weird, but it does that. And there are three of them. There's one in the Y axis, another one in the X axis, and the third one that's coming at you and moving away from you called the Z axis, it's three dimensional. So it looks like this and it's called the P orbital. Here's the rule. Only two electrons maximum in this one. Only two electrons maximum in this one. Watch this. Two electrons maximum in each one of these. So the green one has two, the pink one has two, the blue one has two, but the whole thing will have a maximum of six. six. There you go. Let's do it again. Two, two, two in each of these, and there's three of them, so it's six. So here's an example exam question. How many maximum electrons in the second energy shell? Eight. Eight. Two plus six. Am I right? 